What's your experience been being here in Japan? This trip has been uh, a lot of saturation of just uh, senses and experiences and ideas and new friendships, opportunities, possibilities. I just love learning about the country that invented forest therapy and seeing the all the facets of this country, you know, and it's the, the craziness of, of Tokyo and the crowdedness and the pachinko where it's like the opposite, right? It's like stimulation, intense saturation of noises and sounds and screens and um, and that also here we are in a country that cherry blossom season is like, you know, a highlight of the year. It's happening so much already in this country and sometimes it takes a term to bring it to the surface and that's what I really feel happened with Shinrin Yoku and now seeing the international response to it is just really cool. <laughs> to be here to share the Korean practice and the policies of forest therapy, especially forest therapy instructors. Uh, more than seven, uh, about 700 people uh, holding their licenses. Uh, all these licenses issued by government, uh, uh, specifically the Minister of Korea Forest Service issued that the licenses. Forest environment and human health Dr. Park. Dr. Park presented his new finding of the uh, research. He present to find out what would be the optimal healing forest, for example. Actually, we just try to conduct experiment at the 120% and 8% only. So we don't know over 120% and under 8%. Uh, but, uh, 100% uh, of standard density means optimum density for timber product. So usually all of the forests in South Korea, we managing uh, the 10% of stand density. Height, sense of hearing, sense of touch, you touch a tree. And sense of eating, you can eat fresh, fresh air also is eating. So but the big effect, I think the smell, Will you you mean the fun side? Yes. Will make big big uh, effect. If you have big density, higher density, and also have a wider wider area of the forest, it will be good for the uh, house. You know, one of the things where I feel forest therapy has been a little bit lacking has been the the dialogue between researchers and practitioners and um, it sometimes feels to me like the researchers are doing the science apart from the practitioners and so what hasn't been evaluated in the science is the uh, impacts of specific practices you know it's more like just being in the forest will evaluate that and that's really good and so one of the really exciting to me anyway collaboration potentials is um, working with evaluators and researchers to look at really specific you know, parts of the standard sequence for example the people with higher NK MPUT show lower incident of cash NK activity increased, increased, and big increase. Also, I measured the anti-cancer, anti-cancer protein. Anti-cancer protein also is a control. What we do is very similar and also has some significant differences. And I look forward to an opportunity where we can really learn from each other more about the practice. In our way, we say the guide is not the therapist. 
We say the forest is the therapist. The guide opens the doors. The doors are the senses, right? If you open your senses and really become aware that the forest comes in and does its healing work. People want to join the club because they feel called to nature. They feel called to the forest and they want to be a part of it and they don't know how. So we're giving them um, a way to connect. I'm Melanie from Munich. Um, I'm here with Gisela. And uh, my aim is uh, to introduce Shinrin Yoko to the German health insurance system. And our specific goals in this field is that we want to develop and implement a curriculum for forest therapists and for forest therapy guides. We are focused on the implementation of healing forests in Germany and we would like to see a much better approval uh, of the scientific evidence worldwide. I don't know about you, but we see a lot of young people from age seven or younger coming through with high level anxiety and depression and other related health issues. And this is on the increase. It's quite phenomenal. It's important. I'm a co-founder <laughs> with Bird and Hands of the Informed Canadian chapter. One of the cool things that I really want to know more about is there's someone from Cleveland who's working on a virtual reality project. So we actually have um, VR devices, and if you're not familiar with virtual reality, it's that sort of funny headset that you can wear around, and you have 360 degrees of video. So if we showed someone a video that we took in one of our reservations, wearing the headset, they could look around and they would feel visually that they were in that space. So as they walked forward, they would also have the sensation that they were walking towards the trail. Overall though, we did find that the VR devices, even though they weren't in a green space, they were visualizing that. Um, people did say that it was relaxing and therapeutic. While I personally wouldn't want to really promote that as a way of connecting to the forest, there are people who, who I think could use that as a tool to benefit from. So please uh, uh, remember that five things is it. So when, to, when you enjoy the uh, forward painting, you always use, the, use your five senses. Shin Ryu can increase the NK activity, the number of NK cells, the intracellular level of, of the anti cancer protein. So, this is very important. The Shin Ryu is a bridge, it brings us with the nature. develop a course for forest therapy guides that's the other side of forest therapy. You know, the part about the therapy for these forests that are really damaged. And, you know, in, in ANFT, we emphasize the reciprocity principle in our relationships with the forest, uh, that forest therapy should never be just extractive, but it should be a mutual benefit to all the species all beings in the forest and all the features of the landscape should all benefit from forest therapy. The aspect of you know connecting to the forest which leads to more awareness of the importance of the forest and that we really need it to, to survive. So it's a, it's a form of activism and helps people become more aware that we really need to change our way of living to make you know, a more sustainable lifestyle so that we can continue to exist.
Maybe sometimes it's a way of doing it. So, he was doing it with car, doing, ah, yeah. So you okay. have a place for yeah. emergency. This room go to so something. Yeah. yeah, but today we don't have time. Oh, also, mm. today with sunny, we don't need to go <laughs> oh, <laughs> inside, yeah. Oh, Indoor. Okay. We just uh, enjoy the fort bit mm -hmm. outdoor. Up and the other layer gets thinner. The B waves of ultraviolet rays reach the ground and cause skin cancers, you know, mm. as you know. Mm. Okay? And it is said B wave is shorter than the A wave and the carcinogenicity is strong. But in the forest, the B wave is attenuated thanks to leaves and trees. Mm. So you may feel safe to take some bathing for a long time. Mm. Okay? And it affects the osteogenesis and prevents from osteomalacia and osteoporosis. Okay? More about... Any future plans you have? Yeah, we'll come back to Japan. We'll do a training here for the Japanese guides and make that an exchange of ideas. They were very curious about what we do, the ones who I spoke to, and were eager to experience our way of doing it, but it wasn't built into the schedule, so we'll do that. We'll be collaborating with INFOM and um, also with Nick, Affen Forest Trust. Uh, this beautiful forest in Nagano Prefecture where my friend Mr. Nickel has um, spent 30 years really working to heal a forest that had been very damaged by um, traditional forestry practices. You know, because the, forest, the traditional forestry practices in most of the world and in Japan too are really about extraction of resources and not about cultivating the health and biodiversity of the forest. So for me, what I'd like to do is collaborate with Nick, and he's very enthusiastic about this. And I think we have a really wonderful opportunity here in Japan to study that more. It seems really wide open to explore research on, you know, 40 and below the age group. And so I'm, I'm kind of stoked to see what I'm kind of motivated to do to get more younger people involved in the practice of, of forest therapy. We met our Malaysian friends and then the German, our German friends who are very research-oriented, will be collaborating with us on developing a research and evaluation protocol for, first of all, our training, you know, what what's the result for people who go through the seven-day and then uh, training and then the six-month practicum, but also a standardized evaluation for people who go on forest therapy walks guided by ANFT trained guides. Everyone seems to have their own definition of what forest bathing is and in some ways I'm okay with that because it's the biggest movement of our time is this reconnection to nature and it's really awesome that it's localized for different places because that's what it is. If it was one thing everywhere in the world it wouldn't be connected to place and so I really love seeing how it pops up and how it comes through different people in different ways and pe different people have different priorities around nature connection and really the whole world could all be working around nature connection in different ways and there's enough space for everyone.